All right, so welcome to the last chapter of uh, geometry, unit 12, probability. It's not completely geometry, but we are going to do some geometric stuff with probability. But it's good stuff for you to know. You're probably going to like it. All right, so a couple of definitions first. Number one, sample space, and that is the set of all possible outcomes. So, for example, um, what are all the possible outcomes if I am flipping a coin? Well, it could land on the heads or it could land on the tails. That is my sample space. How about if I'm rolling a, a die? Now, this is a standard die. If I don't say anything, it's a standard die, which means one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are all the possible outcomes we could have. All right? And an event is a favorable outcome. It's what we want to actually happen, all right? So maybe I want to roll a two. The event that I want to happen is rolling a two. And that takes us to probability. Probability is the likelihood that an event will happen. In other words, it's the number of favorable outcomes, how many times whatever it is we want to happen happens, over the number, number of total possible outcomes. All right, let's take a look. If I wanted to flip a coin and I wanted to come up tails, what's the probability? So the total number of favorable outcomes, well, there's only two. I want, there's only, tails is one out of two possibles, all right? So one half, I could, that could be my answer. I could also divide that and get myself a decimal or even get a percent, all right? All three of those will work. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we do here. See if I do this, I want it to land on tails. All right, there we go, 50% chance, and I won. Way to go, Sullivan. Booyah! What is the probability of rolling a two? Well, remember we talked about this, the sample space, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the total number of outcomes is six, and how many times does our outcome happen? It only happens once, right? So one out of six, all right, we could have that as a decimal. Now I'm going around everything four decimal places, all right? Because as we go on this, there's gonna be some subtle changes here towards the end, all right? So four decimal places, or that could be 16.67%. And hopefully you know how to make percents by moving it twice, right? How about the probability of rolling an odd number? Well, let's see, what are our odd numbers? One's an odd number, three and five. Those are all odd numbers. So that the chances, the events, the possible outcomes, favorable three out of six, which would be 0.5 or 50%. All right. All right, so we have a bag of marbles. We have four blue marbles, two red marbles, five green marbles, and one white marble. What's the probability of finding a red marble? What's the total? Well, what's the total number of marbles? Four and two is six, plus five is eleven, plus one is twelve. So we have twelve possibilities. All right, how many times could there be a, a red marble? Two. So we could have one over six, which we know is 0 0.1667, or 16.67 percent. All right. We could have a blue, a purple marble. All right, how many, how many marbles? We have 12. How many of these are purple? None. So zero out of 12 or zero, which is also known as 0%. We will never get a purple marble because there are no blue, purple marbles. How about getting any marble? Well, we know there's 12 and how many of the things in there are marbles? 12. So 12 divided by 12 is one or 100%. All right, so let's take a look at this. This brings up an interesting thing here. We have a range of values, and probability is always gonna fall in this range between zero and one, or 0% and 100%. 50%'s right in the middle, so the probability of rolling a red marble is down here, right? About 16%, somewhere in here. Okay, so there's certain things you need to understand. If I roll zero, it means it is impossible. It is never going to happen. In other words, I will never grab a purple marble. So zero is the lowest it could ever go. 
0.5 or 50%, it means as likely to not happen as it is to happen. And then 100% is certain. It is definitely going to happen. If you get 100% probability, it's definitely going to happen. A lot of time, the, you know, you'll say, it's going to rain today. Well, you don't know that. The only way you can say with 100% certainty that it's going to rain is right now, if you look out the window and it's raining, you can say there's a 100% chance of rain today because it is raining. All right, the Mad King Kelly tosses three coins. He promises free food for all if two come up heads, or excuse me, tails. So let's see, I'm going to make a tree diagram here. So the first toss, he could flip a head or a tail, right? So that's one. Now, this branches off. That's why we call it a tree diagram. The second toss could be heads or tails. And over here, it could be heads or tails. So now we have our first toss and our second toss. Then our third toss for each of these could be heads or tails. All right. The great thing about tree diagrams is it helps us find all possibilities, the sample space. So the first one, heads, heads, heads. So I'm going to just write that with three H's. Or I could do heads, heads, tails. Or heads, tails, heads. Or heads, tails, tails. And that's four. Let's come over here. Tails, heads, heads. Or we go tails, heads, tails. We could also do tails, tails, heads. Or tails, tails, tails. So if you look at it all together, we have eight possibilities. So the probability of getting two tails exactly is going to be out of eight. Let's see. This is three. That's not good enough. We have two tails here, two tails here, no, two tails here, no, no, and no. So how many chances? Three out of eight that it has two tails exactly. Well, how many chances are there that it's not going to be two tails? Now, there's two ways to do this. We know that two tails is three out of eight. That means all the remaining possibilities, five out of eight. If you don't believe me, you can count the scribbled out ones. One, two, three, four, five. All right? So that's the use of a tree diagram right there. You're going to need to do this um, in the packet. You're going to have to do four coins. So you would draw another layer down here representing another toss on that. All right, so a deck of cards has four suits. Now, uh, I've learned over the years that a lot of kids don't play cards. And so I'll put this included on here, but you really need to get to know this. Because cards, we're going to use the whole chapter. There's four suits. Hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. Each suit has 13 cards. Numbered cards are 2 through 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Jack, Queen, and King, those are called face cards. All right. Um, and then the Ace. An Ace is not a numbered card, and it is not a face card. Hearts and Diamonds are red. Clubs and Spades are black. So let's see, what is the probability of picking a heart? Well, each suit has 13 cards, 13 over 52 total cards. All right, because 4 times 13 is the total number of cards, 52. That's 1 fourth, 0.25, or 25%. Booyah! What is the probability of picking a jack? Well, let's see, how many jacks are there? There's one heart, one diamond, one spade, one club. So there's four jacks out of 52, which is one out of 13. Now, notice, I want you to reduce all these. And I'm not, uh, I'm not afraid to tell you that's something you should be able to do with or without a calculator. If you can't do it without a calculator, remember 4 divided by 52, math, frac, and it will give you the reduced number. All right? It will also give you the decimal just in case you had forgotten. But uh, there's no excuse not to have these reduced as simple as you can. You're, you're going to risk not doing it or getting it right. So that's 0 0.0769, which is also 7.69%. Down here, picking not a club. Well, that means we'd have a heart, a diamond, or a spade. So that's 13 times 3, or 39 cards out of 52, which is 3 over 4, which is 0.75 or 75%. How about not picking a face card? Well, how many face cards are there? One, two, three. So if there's 13 total cards and we have 
three face cards, that means there's 10 that, per suit that are not. So 10 times 4 is 40 over 52. And that reduces down to 10 over 13. And 10 over 13 is 0. 0.7692. Or 76.92%. Alright. Alright, so the Mad King Kelly is going to throw me into the dungeon. Unless I can hit the blue ring here. Alright, the blue ring. Alright, so let's take a look. What is the blue section? So the red circle has a diameter of 18. That means the radius is 9, and the blue circle, this big blue circle here, has a radius of 11 because the diameter is 22. So now if you think about this, we want to hit the blue section. All of this is the blue section, but we have to take away this red. So the, what, the part we want to hit is the blue, the total blue minus the red circle, all right, the total blue, the big one, over the total blue, the big circle total, all right? So let's see, what's the area for a circle? Pi r squared, so pi, our radius is 11 squared, minus our red is pi minus nine squared, all right? And then we're gonna divide that by pi, and then down here again, our radius for the total circle is 11, so we have 11 squared. So up here we have 121 pi minus 81 pi, all that over 121 pi. All right, so up top, what do we have? We have 121 minus the 81, we get 40 pi over 121 pi. Now the nice thing about this is, you know, you have these pi's in here and it seems kind of, you know, they're just there, but uh, that they're gonna matter, but they cancel out here because n pi divided by pi is one. So we're really left with 40 over 121, which would be a decimal equivalent of 0 0.3306, all right? Or about 33%. There you have it, all right? So again, sometimes you're gonna take the area and then you have to take away. If you have to take away any part, you're going to know you're going to subtract. All right? All right, so now the Mad King Kelly tells Bruss he'll spare his life if he can hit the circle target with a tomahawk. What's the probability of Bruss hitting the circle if he knows the dimensions of the rectangle are 6 by 4? All right, so we know this is 4. Well, let's see Mr. Bruss throw a tomahawk first of all. All right, truth be told, that wasn't Mr. Bruss. It was Mr. Hader. He's out in the Azores teaching at Lodges right now. Um, but that's really him throwing a tomahawk, which I think is pretty sweet. <laughs> Impressive, all right? Uh, I'd hate to be a kid in his class. Acting up in the back of the room, he can hit you with a tomahawk. All right. Anyway, here we go. So let's figure it out. So he wants to hit the circle. So we're going to do this area of the circle divided by the area of the rectangle. And that'll give us our probability. So the circle, if this diameter is 4, the radius is 2. So pi 2 squared divided by base times height of the rectangle. So this is 4 pi over 6 times 4 is 24. All right? Divide that out, we get 0.5236 or 52.36%. Pretty good chance that Mr. Bruss is going to hit that, right? Uh, unless you've ever thrown a tomahawk before, which you probably realize it's much harder than it looks. Uh, so again, good luck if you're in Mr. Hader's class. All right, so pause the video. Try these on your own. All right, welcome back. Let's see what we got. So you roll two dice to add up the numbers. So let's roll the dice once. We could have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And underneath, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Second roll, right? It would be the same all across here. So I could just copy this. The first roll is the two, then I could roll any of them. This is our tree diagram, right? Maybe it would have been faster to just do it the other way, but this is pretty savvy technologically. Okay, it's not really, but. All right, so now let's take a look. 
what they really want is adding up the numbers. So we got to be careful here. So add them up. One and one is two. One and two, three. One and three, four. Five, six, seven. Two plus one, three. Two plus two, four. Two plus three, five, six, seven, eight. Three plus one, four. Three plus two, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Four plus one, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five plus one is uh, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Five, six, eleven. Six plus one is seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. And six plus six is twelve. So if you look at it, we have one, two, three, four, five, 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 36 total ones. All right? 36 possible outcomes. All right, so what is the probability of rolling a seven? We have 36 possible outcomes. How many times is it a seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right? Six out of 36 is the same as one out of six, which is 0.1667 or 16.67%. All right? And let's take our look at the next one, rolling an eight or higher. So eight or higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So it could happen fifteen out of thirty-six times. That is the same as five out of twelve, which is the same as point four one six seven or forty one point six seven percent. All right. All right. You're probably going to do very well on this mastery check, and I hope you will enjoy this next little clip. You probably will enjoy it. It's a little take on probability. Thank <laughs> you.